Hi, my name is Louise. I'm on this year's um, selection committee for the Edinburgh Short Film Festival taking place in October and November. Um, as regards the Q&A, um, so because this was in the context of the Thistles and Sunflowers Festival, which focused very much on stories, so does this Q&A have the same focus. Um, so I hope you enjoy the conversation as we talk about cultural heritage, influences both um, musical and visual techniques, um, and the challenges that come with working with the short story slash short film as a form and many other things. I hope you enjoy. Uh, hello, my name is uh, Theodor Ushev, uh, animation and film director. I've been uh, in the field of uh, animation in the last uh, probably 17 years, uh, creating uh, more than 17 films, actually. Mm. And uh, yeah, uh, my film, uh, actually, I, I had a perspective at this year festival. And uh, that's it, I think. Amazing, cool. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry, that's always the the one question I hate when I have job interviews or whatever, and people are like, please introduce yourself, or would you like to tell it's, us about it's, yourself? It's difficult. I know, yeah, it's like, where do I start? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I guess just to start off, because, so the festival was about, um, so it was named Thistles and Sunflowers, so um, talking about um, stories and artists from um, Scotland and Bulgaria, um, so I was just wondering, in connection to that, um, how important is your Bulgarian heritage for you, um, for like your whole work, your films, um, your art in general? Well, uh, it's very important, obviously, mm -hmm. even if I worked uh, almost uh, all my film career had uh, been in, uh, in, uh, in Canada. Mm. But uh, my uh, my education was in Bulgaria. Actually, I didn't study film. I became a film director in Canada. Uh, but uh, I think that the psychology and uh, the basis of my process, uh, the filmmaking process and the aesthetic is based on my Bulgarian education. Also, uh, it, another important thing that I, that I, I would like to, to underline is uh, that I was raised in the time of communism. Mm. And uh, so it was like a shift at the, at the time when I was supposed to go out to the world, uh, the communism fell down, that the wall fell down. So we were completely mm -hmm. like, we lived in a completely different world. Mm -hmm. So we had to change ourselves uh, very fast, nothing of what we were almost mm -hmm. uh, was uh, was uh, valid. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, yeah, and, and there are many other things, of course. Uh, my not only my aesthetics, but uh, the way how I think uh, the my uh, incap incapacity of uh, accepting uh, and be tolerant to the mm -hmm. totalitarian regimes mm -hmm. and uh, even the even the slight notion of something totalitarian uh, makes me react uh, in a very even aggressive way uh, so uh, I'm very against the violence and mm -hmm. the violence over the 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 human the human nature and the violence over these mm -hmm. ideas and uh, the violence of ideology over the over the the life itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it uh, it's just a small part of uh, what is characteristic for my films. And uh, that came from my uh, country, Bulgaria. Mm. Yeah, no, I can understand that. Because um, definitely when I was watching, um, so the five short films that were selected by Iviana and Daniela, mm -hmm. who curated this, um, I definitely noticed that there was some kind of theme. I mean, it, it started with um, Demoni, I think was the first film, and then it ended with uh, Sonambulo. So it was quite nice to have sort of, um, mm. 
what's the word films that were a bit more lighthearted um my my, my most uh, joyful films I, I yeah say. probably the yeah I've not them. seen all of your films yeah. I've still got <laughs> a lot to watch um but yeah I definitely realized that with um I think it was Gloria Victoria and um, Physics of Sorrow that it was definitely, like you could tell that it was very politically engaged, um, mm. which yeah, is definitely, I think, very important for um, artists and, and filmmakers to kind of, yeah, get mm. a message out there to push for change. Yeah, I was going to ask about the sort of like your Bulgarian background because I noticed that you had, um, so you used the music from um, Kutarashki, I don't know if I'm saying that right, yes. um, and right. Uh, the writer Gospodinov, yes. I believe. All, yeah, I thought it was interesting. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was interesting that, um, like, even though you're now like based in Canada, um, that you still sort of had like that connection to um, mm -hmm. Bulgarians still use like yeah Bulgarian writers and music mm -hmm. um yeah I yeah uh I don't know why I use mm -hmm. uh, so so many East European and Bulgarian uh as a basis, basis writers so music uh, composers uh in almost all of my other films there have been um uh, East European composers mm, okay uh, even in in my uh, 20th century, the, both, the three of the composers are Russian. Mm -hmm. And uh, I worked a lot with Kutarash, uh, who is a Bulgarian, in New York, it was Putin, sorry, and the other is uh, un unstable. Is it okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still hearing what you're saying, yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, and uh, the thing is, uh, I don't know why it's uh, it's mm -hmm. kind of uh, intuitive. Uh, mm. When I see on when I hear something, it has to to touch me. And obviously, mm. the things that touch me more is uh, are Bulgarian artists. Mm. And also, somehow, I, I get connected with emotionally with them. Mm -hmm. It resonates very easily with me. Mm. And uh, of course, it's not very easy to, to make uh, Bulgarian films in Canada. And I'm very grateful for my uh, producer, Mark Bertrand, who always helped me and he was pushing uh, the boundaries uh, that mm -hmm. I can make the, the films that I, that I would like to, to, to make. And uh, yeah, and what is interesting that uh, even the, the next films, somehow they become uh, now I'm on the on the way to, to finish my first live action feature film, which mm -hmm. is again uh, filmed and uh, shoot we shoot it in Bulgaria. In okay, Bulgaria. cool. And it's gonna be out this uh, fall. Ah, and amazing. also my cool. next, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. very in October. And uh, also my next animated film is gonna be based on a. Bulgarian writer short story. So yeah. somehow I connect with them. Not that I don't like the Canadian writers mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, music, <laughs> especially mm -hmm. I, I love them. But when I start working with them, something like it doesn't click. And for me, it's very important that I feel emotionally connected with the mm -hmm. thing that I do. Because for me, the, the filmmaking is in a personal process. Mm -hmm. It uh, it always goes to what we can say about the uh, about the world, mm -hmm. and uh, not only about the world but to the world. And uh, obviously, my background helps me to to make it more. You see, the, for me, the film is like a personal uh, personal thesis, a personal story, mm -hmm. always. Uh, I'll never make a film, even I did some based on Kafka, for example, or other writers, but always has to be something personal inside. Mm -hmm. Very yeah, no, I, yeah, I definitely, yeah, I think I could definitely relate to that because I think it shows as well when you watch a film or you sort of like read a book or something and um, you can tell if the artist has, I mean, like the artist will always, always have a connection to their work, but you can tell if it's really personal. I think it really comes through to the audience and it makes it really touching. Because mm -hmm. um, I remember when I was watching um, Physics of Sorrow, thankfully on a big screen, because it was at mm -hmm. the festival. So that was really nice. Um, 
yeah I, I don't know it really really touched me I, I found it really triggering even though like I was raised in a completely different context um I think it was probably just a mix of like the arts like the techniques you used and um the music as well which was super like diverse um yeah I think I was just a bit surprised at how much yeah how much it jumped between styles of music and there was like this French music Francoise Hardy and then um like oh, I can't remember but more like kind of like pop stuff and then there was really like classical music um Man, kind of Man Without like, Cats yeah oh that's it yeah yeah it was a really good song I hadn't heard it for ages um but yeah I think just for that as well it felt very personal because it's not often that um I don't know how to say it, it didn't feel like you would necessarily put all these musics together and it would sort of make sense but it did in this film and I think I don't know if it's because it was somewhat personal to you but it felt very organic and very natural um Yeah, I yeah, I found it's, it very uh, interesting. Uh, yeah, the question of music. Uh, for me, music is very important in a film. Mm. And uh, I, won't, I won't don't think about it. When I start the film, I will always uh, have the music in my head. I mm. can see the film only with what, one kind of music and I just put it there and it's, it is uh, what I was looking for. Uh, but it always has some kind of emotional and uh, part of my memories. So mm -hmm. I guess I try to be very honest in everything. You know, I put the music that I like, I put mm. and that I love. I would never put something that I don't like, even if it fits to the, to the concept mm -hmm. of, the, of the film. And uh, also, as everything is connected to my personal tastes or uh, uh, Well, some, from time to time, I can use music that I don't like, but I think that it's necessary, like as a uh, anti anti to, to to the film, like uh, to to add contrast mm -hmm. on, the, on the other side. And uh, but yeah, basically, the the music that I use is uh, is the is the music that I that I love and that is mm -hmm. connected to me. And even I don't think, uh, I, I think that, yeah, as you said, it's very eclectic, mm -hmm. uh, but this is how I like it. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I got many com uh, comments after the, the film went out that uh, despite the fact it's uh, somehow connected with Bulgaria and Canada, and my immigration to Canada, mm -hmm. it still touches some people who didn't have this experience who live in completely different countries and uh, don't have the same the same the same thing that never happened to them mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how it it, it happened uh, probably because I was uh, I was naked in this film mm -hmm. I, I didn't cheat so I guess this uh, somehow connects with the speakers mm -hmm. and the people who work. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think you always connect to, maybe if not the whole story, it's just parts yeah. of a story that you'll connect to. Talking about, so all the influences you use, um, I found it really interesting because yeah, I remember sitting down watching these films and thinking, oh my God, there's so much going on <laughs> because of, um, <laughs> I think it was mostly the inspirations for me. So what was it? For example, I think it was in Sonambulo. There's a lot of sort of like art uh, inspired by uh, Miro, I believe. Um, and I was, Juan Miro. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, yeah, I was kind of watching it and I was wondering, oh, is this like, are you using these inspirations sort of like out of pleasure because you enjoy them or is it would you connect like more deeply with um the artist and maybe his ideologies or the art movement in general uh the reason why i used the uh, mirror in son sonambo uh was uh, somehow in my head the, the music uh, was connecting even the, the ah, okay. different mm -hmm. and uh it's very unlogical Uh, mm. and uh, there is no it's intuitive okay. but uh, I was uh, inspired by this poem by Locke uh, mm. Roman Sonambulu 
And uh, of course, when you say rock, who is uh, surrealist, it come mm -hmm. it, it comes to my mind all the, the the Spanish painters, and of course the first who came was uh, Juan Miro, and I was imagining what would be if Juan Miro was an animator and he was animating uh, uh, this uh, poem, and uh, after that. Yeah, or at the same time came the music of Kotarashki, which was quite a completely different story. It has nothing with Spain, mm -hmm. neither with the uh, with the uh, surrealism. And I was thinking, okay, it's cool to, to connect unconnectable things. Uh, the the logical things could be that I will use flamenco or something or mm, Spanish okay. music. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was too obvious. So I would like I love to 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 mix uh unmixable to make a mix and match mm -hmm. in very aleatory and uh, impulsive way mm -hmm. so that's uh, that's why i did it okay oh great yeah i was wondering about that because um <laughs> i suppose yeah if it's so um what's the word like intuitive yeah maybe yeah i mean it it works um but it's interesting because yeah once again it makes it really personal um and yeah i was i also find actually Actually, the thing was uh, when I was why I did this film. When I was a kid, I was uh, a sleepwalker, mm, and ah, uh, okay. and my father told me that once I went to the balcony and I was walking on the on the edge of the balcony, which is mm -hmm. very dangerous, and he didn't wake me up mm. when I was sick. So when I was sick, I was um, a, a lot of uh, sleepwalking. I did a, a lot okay. of sleepwalking, and actually, the final the final. Uh, dress that is it's like uh, like memories uh, from a dress on my balcony mm. and it's, i was kind of uh, recreating in my uh, in my head the the landscape from my own village that i was born in my oh, own city. Okay. Mm -hmm. so it was not very spanish but it was uh, personal again so i finished it in the in the proper way so mm -hmm. that's why i did it i was imagining uh, what could be like uh, sleepwalking and seeing all those okay. pictures going around mm -hmm. ah interesting and i guess that matches sort so, of like uh, mural's so work as well because it's very like surrealist and sort of like mm -hmm. dreamlike yeah i i really like that as well because it means that you're watching a film and because it's not necessarily well especially this one because it's not necessarily um like it's quite abstract you kind of imagine it just kind of feels like you're watching a, a sort of dreamscape with music and images and it kind of lets the audience sort of connect to it um I think more easily sometimes when it's a bit abstract because you can kind of put your own interpretation or put your own feelings onto something and I think that's really beautiful because it well once again it helps people connect to stories um ah yeah I wanted to ask about um thank you yeah you're very welcome um oh what was it um so i'm just looking at my i took a few quick notes with things i wanted to mention um okay yeah so when you come up with your stories is it the uh, yeah how do you come up with your stories is it like the music that comes first or the like the medium, the art technique, the the subject of the story. Mm. Hello again. Yeah, something happened. Yeah. Yeah, I think the connection. Uh, like internet problems. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Good. Uh, so uh, let's start uh, from when we left. Uh, where mm -hmm. we left uh, uh, the connection between the, the the story and the film. When I have an idea, it always comes uh, the the concept. It always comes all the time. I don't know how it happens, but uh, it's it's always like uh, immediate. Uh, in my head. Uh, like uh, of course the thing after that they change but i always have the 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 idea at the same time coming uh, with the techniques mm -hmm. and things because for me i i love i love to to use different techniques 
Uh, but mm -hmm. the technique is always connected to the story. It serves the story. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's a slave of the story. It's mm -hmm. never because of the of the technique of itself. Uh, the first thing is the, the the movie, the film itself, and the story. And the story is the music. And after that, it comes the technique. Uh, sometimes uh, some of the films actually I got inspired by a musical composition because it's a very uh, very easy to construct a film based on a musical composition because the music itself it has its own construction it mm -hmm. has a basis it has the, the the windows it has the roof it has everything uh, already there so it's uh, very stable as a construction and this is the mm -hmm. most the easiest uh, way for me to to create to make a music. Uh, but making the story, it's a, it's a, a, a another thing. I I really love to de deconstruct the the story when I have it, split it on little pieces, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, make a little bit of chaos creating the the film. Because for me, it's very important. To, you know, uh, I don't like to 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 make a uh, spectator feel very com comfortable. I would mm -hmm. love to, to make him a little bit uh, wondering what's going on on the screen. Also, I love very much to, to play with the quotations. In every, of, every one of my films, there are layers. It's like an onion, like mm -hmm. different layers. You mm. can peel every layer, and in the back, it stays uh, a story. But uh, if you want to, understand all the layers and quotations you have to watch the film many times mm -hmm. uh, for example in uh, the physics of soul there are many quotes to famous uh, painters or even uh, uh, films mm -hmm. and uh, i used like some of them like uh, just connecting of course no many people are gonna mention it but if you see it many times you kind of start imagining uh, those uh, those uh, I, I love i love to i love to play games with this mm -hmm. to see like uh, to to cheat and say okay did you see this and sometimes they don't see it, but it doesn't matter as a basis the the onion stays uh, the, uh, the stays still there mm -hmm. you just have to peel out the the layers to understand everything that's going on in this kind it's a, it's one of my favorite uh, tricks. Yeah, uh, and the layers. Uh, mm -hmm. The layers. Mm. Yeah, I think I saw you to watch it's still, it. It's, it's still not to it's still not to to distract to disrupt the, the, the mm. spectator of watching the film. Uh, I mean, the film has to be understood by even by a kid to to to, to be entertained. By a kid. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's not going to take all the levels, all the layers, mm. but uh, still he's going to see something. In it. So uh, basically, there is a structure and a story, and uh, which is kind of simple. And but go, if you want to go deeper, it depends of, uh, of uh, your field of education of how much you know mm -hmm. about the things, certain things. And uh, so it's kind of like uh, having a film for everyone. From mm, the kids yeah, of course. The pro professors, professors in psychology or. For example, in uh, the film uh, Lips of Diaries, mm -hmm. which uh, I consider like uh, one of my best, there are a lot of uh, writings and connections to Lacan uh, books, ah, okay. mm -hmm. and, uh, which I used extensively for creating mm -hmm. my films. Also, there are many uh, quotes uh, and tricks. Uh, I used uh, some uh, moments and scenes from Godard uh mm -hmm. breathless uh, and uh what else uh, yeah there are many many quotations in this film as well mm -hmm. ah good to know <laughs> i'll know when i watch that one i'll remember uh, let go and put uh, i'll try and watch it to enjoy it and then i'll i'll try also, and watch it again uh, and get also Anton, anthony Arto and uh, many ideas of these uh, intellectuals from the from the 60s Mm -hmm. This movement of uh, structuralism and uh, deep, uh, deep dive into the human soul mm -hmm. and brain, mostly the human brain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I, I find it fascinating to have a film that, yeah, as you say, has 
so many layers. Yeah, I really find fascinating the sort of your um, analogy of the, the onion and all the layers and you can watch the film and just enjoy it, but you can also, mm -hmm. if you want to go a bit deeper and get a bit more intellectual mm -hmm. about stuff, you can also do that. And I, I think it's very enriching for mm -hmm. the audience as well to have films like that. And I think, I don't know, I wonder if it, if that's tricky as well for a short film, because um, obviously that comes with its own challenges that it's not a, like a feature film where you have so much time to explain everything. And with a short film, I mean, I remember just studying um, like a, a course on short stories at university for part of literature. And uh, mm -hmm. we were talking about how with a short story, it's so much more difficult than a novel sometimes because you have to contain so much more in such a short um, space versus a novel yes. where you can explain and you also have to keep the audience engaged as well um, and get them interested very quickly. Um, so is, is that something you find yes. challenging with short films? Oh, oh yes, uh, mm -hmm. but I love it. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the short films is a uh, whole uh, new, for me it's the, the pure cinema. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the, the cinema was born as a short stories. After that, uh, the, the growing to the two hours was a commercial thing that was invented so you can get uh, your popcorns and your cola yeah. <laughs> and eat it and drink it. So you cannot go for 15 minutes for a short film because your popcorn will be, uh, mm -hmm. will be eaten. So I guess uh, that's how this format of two hours movie was invented. Mm. Uh, but for me, the short story always stays the, 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 the basic of cinema and the storytelling. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's challenging, it's very difficult. Mm. Uh, there are not many people uh, who are able to make a good uh, short film. Uh, because first, uh, yes, uh, you, have, you have to tell your story to engage the, the, the spectators, mm -hmm. make them uh, feel, uh, mm -hmm. and you don't have uh, time to develop the characters. So you have to be very precise in what you put into mm. the film very minimalistic to build the, it's not very easy to build the character in 15 minutes or uh, even half an hour. So, uh, and this is what I love in this because there you only relate to, not to the psychology and to the tricks uh, of uh, psychological uh, cinema, mm -hmm. but you relate only to the pure naked uh, story. Mm -hmm. Or lack of story. Yeah. If we talk about <laughs> non-narrative films, which I which I love as well, mm -hmm. uh, the abstract non-narrative films, which are uh, created just for the idea, the concept of the pure uh, the, the pure structuralism of, uh, of mm -hmm. the, uh, stu structuralist cinema. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it, it's, uh, it's, it's difficult, the short uh, filmmaking is, uh, but I, I'm telling you, it's the most challenging, but it's the most real, real, real awarding uh, thing to make. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe, I believe in, uh, in, the short, uh, in the short film. I always continue to, to make the short films, even if I started making feature length. Film, uh, for me, the, the, short, uh, the short film is the essence of cinema. Mm -hmm. oh, that's really interesting. Yeah, thanks for answering that in so much depth. Um, so would you, yeah, would you always stay with the short form and never go with the, the feature length film? Uh, no, no, I, uh, as I said, uh, I just oh, yes. did my first uh, feature length. Yes, film. you did, yeah. So. Uh, and, and it was fun. It was a completely mm -hmm. different thing, but I kind of did it as a, mixture of the short stories ah, okay. mm -hmm. together uh, so i uh, still playing uh, uh, it's completely different thing mm -hmm. it, it's still uh, it's interesting but for me the short story is the, the best the mm -hmm. short film is the best yeah no i love short films as well and <laughs> short stories probably uh, for me it's uh, important because i'm kind of uh, add uh, attention deficit disorder mm. so I have a problem watching for a long time films right mm -hmm. for example this uh, trend uh, recent which is like uh, films of two hours and a half 
yes, it's possible, but uh, mm -hmm. you have to go to the cinema, you have to sit inside. Uh, mm -hmm. Even there is a, a single disruption for me, it, uh, it drives me crazy. I can't stand people eating or drinking around. Ah, me. okay, yeah, They're big problem honest. in the cinema. <laughs> I, I have to, to dive into the to the film if I go, if mm -hmm. I'm going to watch two hours in that film, because you have to be inside. Otherwise, it's much better to make a short story because at least people for 15 minutes they can get you can get and keep them yeah. engaged. No, that's and true. Yeah, it's good if you have if you struggle to keep your attention going. Um, exactly. Just okay. So just to bounce off that, we'll probably wrap up soon. I'm so sorry to keep you so long. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, Zoom will okay. end in seven minutes, anyways. It's Talking about how like you you struggle to keep your attention going. Um, I was wondering because a lot of the techniques you use, um, for example, is it um, lino cutting for blind vaisha? Yeah. The, yeah, yeah, and um, what was the other one? Was it the hot wax painting for Felix Escaro? In Incaustic. In the wax painting, right. hot wax painting. Yeah, I've, I mean, I've never done it myself, but um, I was watching the film and I was thinking, oh my God, this must have taken so long <laughs> to make. Mm -hmm. Um, how, so, uh, yeah, how long did it take you to make, actually? Uh, oh, it's a whole uh, story. Uh, I learned this technique from my father, who was a painter as ah, well. Okay. I've never tried it before uh, I, I did the, the film, though. Uh, so when I started, kind of, uh, it came to my mind because it was the first technique that was used to create um, the first realist portraits in the history mm -hmm. of painting, mm -hmm. the Fayum portraits from Egypt, mm -hmm. uh, first century BC, which stayed intact for 22 centuries, almost. Uh, the colors didn't change, everything was uh, stable. Uh, and uh, I love the idea of as the film deals with the time capsule and the first yeah. time capsule mm -hmm. where the the, the the tombs of the Egyptians. And so in my head, uh, this uh, just conceptually connected. The problem mm -hmm. was that nobody used this technique to make animation and I had to invent it. And the first, uh, the, when I started, it was very difficult, but after that, I just uh, figured it out how to use mm -hmm. the technique. And it was, uh, I was never been so happy uh, than when I did this film. It was like a pure happiness. Mm -hmm. So the yeah. physics of sorrow was a pure happiness for me. Because, <laughs> uh, it was uh, really amazing to, to paint those days. It is very physically demanding. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a pain in my back and neck uh, working in my hand, uh, but uh, so I had to work like three, four months and after that take some small vacation and right. go mm -hmm. back to the studio. Uh, so it was not easy procedure. It took me like five years, but mm -hmm. it was amazing. Okay. I had a great time working on it. Mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, I'm uh, well, I'm crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I love to to use techniques that never been used for the animation. Mm -hmm. to invent the techniques, which I think this uh, animation is great uh, uh, tool and medium uh, because of uh, because of the you can invent everything. Everything is mm -hmm. possible there. Just use your imagination to tell a story, and there you go. It's, uh, it just comes together. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. No, I have to say I love um, films. Just sort of films with mm -hmm. uh, human actors but um I do yeah I do love animation because I agree I think it's maybe a bit easier to do something that's not been done before something a bit more innovative even if you're using techniques from like centuries and what well, I mean mm -hmm. thousands of years um I think you can always do something that's not been done before and mm -hmm. I mean I, I find it also very beautiful that you're using a technique that was used thousands and thousands of years ago and it's still uh, like somehow it just creates a connection with history and you bring it in your film mm -hmm. um yeah i thought it was really beautiful because also of the with the imagery of the yes. um the greek mythology and like ariadna and the ariadna's thread yeah. i was thinking oh, this is so nice because it's like creating a thread with mm -hmm. like in time with the technique you're using up till today and in the story itself as well um uh, yeah and i guess that's relating to the layers you were talking about in your films um yeah yeah actually the, the encaustic was invented by the greeks 
before, okay. it was, uh, before the Egyptians took it and started using it for ah, the okay, I thought it was the Egyptians. Sar 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 sarco sarcophax, yeah. The mm -hmm. Greeks uh, first uh, did the first encaustics were done by uh, Greeks. That's mm. why in the name encaustico, which means in Greek, uh, cotwax. They used it. Uh, okay, okay, that makes sense. But 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 they did gods. They used it for, to to create gods. Mm. And the uh, Egyptians they used it to make portraits of dead people, of humans who were in the tombs. Oh wow! Well, so once yeah. again, you think the Egyptians invented something, and it's the Greeks again? Yeah, um, yeah, always. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> always the Greeks. Um, cool. Well. Yeah, I think this is probably a nice note to end. We've only got two minutes left on the Zoom, so I don't want us right. to, to be cut out. Um, um, okay. Well, thank you for your attention and thank you for the nice questions. It was really fun. And Great. No, thank lovely. you so and thank much. You, and thank you for showing my films. It's important to find Absolutely. Uh, yeah, no, I agree. And audience uh, outside of animation festivals. It's very mm -hmm. rare because it's, we are kind of Sometimes I feel like we are kind of our uh, inner circle showing mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it's not very easy to find the uh, public outside of, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's the, true. Uh, outside of animation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, yeah, people are so used to yeah. seeing. So you, oh, sorry, it cut out. <laughs> it cut out indeed. Apologies for the abrupt ending to the video. Um, thankfully, we were just wrapping up. So if you want to watch um, Theodore's films or if you want to watch them again, um, you can find The Physics of Sorrow on Prime Video if you have access to that. Blind Vaisha um, is also available on Prime Video, but you can also find it on the National Film Board of Canada website, which has quite a few other of um, Theodore's films on there as well. So you should definitely check it out. And Demoni, you can find it on um, Theodore's Vimeo account. Gloria Victoria is available on the National Film Board of Canada website again. And Sonambulo is also on Vimeo. It's been posted by Bonobo Studio. Um, as regards the Thistles and Sunflowers exhibition, the Poetry Trail is still going on until the 18th of September. It's open Monday, Thursday from 9am to 5pm. It's at the Sandman House Garden, 55 High Street in Edinburgh, so right in the city centre. Um, it is free also, which is good to know. Um, and lastly, I just want to say a big thank you to Ileana and um, Daniela for organising and curating this. Um, and a very big thank you again to Ileana for um, designing the opening and closing slides to this Q&A. Um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. <laughs>